when persuasive technology gets dark. You know, darkness is something that we don't really appreciate and we don't know why and how, but the darkness is something that we think, well, I don't know what to expect. I don't know what can happen there. In the same way, the similar feelings we can experience when we don't know how technology is built or what was the intent of the game designers. So therefore, in this work, together with Tobias Neustrom, we try to demystify and look for how technology can be built and the games can be designed so that there is an intent of the designer or developer, which is not transparent to the users and is not beneficial to the users. We try to care about users' well-being. So therefore, we reviewed the literature and we looked into the previously uncovered ways how some of the games or some of the technologies are not bringing equal benefits for the users as they're bringing the benefits for the owners or developers of that particular technology or game. After that, we reviewed the literature and then we looked to propose a framework and a matrix. These are the tools that we propose in this work so that Practitioners and game designers and also scientists would be more equipped when dealing with evaluation of technologies and games. Fundamentally, we started to build our work on the previously published research paper. And that paper proposes the first introductory matrix, which is about intention outcome matrix, has four quadrants. So one quadrant, the best one is the intended and the positive outcome for the users. So that's the intention of the game designer or technology developer to bring some positive change in people's lives. So that's what we call target behavior. So sometimes can be also unintended positive outcome, which is the second quadrant where the users can have an extra benefit. That's why we call it surprise behavior. It's a positive for the user, but it was not intended by the game designer or technology developer. Now that's the positive side of the matrix. What about the negative side of the matrix? There we have also two quadrants. And let's start with the negative outcomes for the user and it's unintended. In this case, we call them backfires. So that was the essence of the previously published paper together with Brian Kugelman, where we had proposed the taxonomy of persuasive backfiring. And that taxonomy is very helpful for people to try to predict and avoid some unintended human behaviors with regards to technology design or the game. The last quadrant is dark patterns. And that's exactly what we are now addressing in our research. To understand the underlying phenomena behind the dark patterns, in this work, we looked at what could be the possibly another matrix emerging under the dark patterns. And we looked into the visibility darkness matrix, how the intent of the developer or the game is visible or invisible to the users. And then also the effect or the impact to the well-being of the user, whether that's a not that bad, which could be gray. So it's still in a favor for the developer, not that good for the user, but it wouldn't be maybe that severe. And then, the other end is the darkness, where it's really the balance is not there. So it's more benefits for the developer and less for the users. So we propose this visibility darkness matrix. And to explain how it works, we also have collected some examples for that. So let's start with a visible and gray quadrant. And there we have two examples. One is the game Fortnite, and the other one is the frequent fly programs. So Fortnite is a game where people can purchase extra interesting features. And of course, it doesn't give any competitive edge for the people who are purchasing these packages. But the other thing is if people get into the mindset, okay, I, if I purchase more, I will look better. I, I have more entertainment. And sometimes you get more of a possible addiction. I need to get more and more and more of this. And in terms of the frequent flyer program, you know, sometimes when there are points that you collect in the frequent fly program, and then some of these points have expiration date. And when this expiration data comes for you to not lose your achieved level before, sometimes it suggests you need to purchase the next trip. You have to book another hotel room or you need to rent another car and you have no plans for that. So therefore it kind of have the situation where you need to choose which way to go and you know, if you don't 
book your next hotel or next flight, you're going to lose those points. And therefore, it's not like a very clear whether that's positive or negative. So therefore, we position is at a gray. And of course, it's visible because it's description into the loyalty program. So let's move on. The other thing that we would like to look at the gray area, which is not visible, but invisible. And for that, we have an example about the game, the game Two Dots. And that game is where you players have a few rounds for free. And then the same window, the same pop-up with the same colored buttons, instead of saying continue, says purchase. And it's not the same. It's kind of your, the game design is making the users to, to believe, oh, this green button means continue, and I'm gonna just press it. But in this case, it's kind of building up this brain muscle that continue, continue, the green button means continue, but now it's about paying. And therefore, it's not that visibly explained what's gonna happen now and how it's gonna change. So therefore, we position it as the gray and invisible. So now let's move on to the visible and dark. And for that corner, we have a game, again, it's FIFA 18, and they have lots. Everyone can have their own team, and they can play the games and also make the team stronger by purchasing specific packages called lots. And that really makes your team more competitive. The problem is, once the users start to purchase these lots, their teams become much more competitive. So that the people who are not purchasing any lot are not having any chance to be in the competition with the teams that have players supported by these lots. So therefore, in the end, although the whole game and the experience or description of these lots are, is very visible, everyone can read them, everyone can see what's in them, still, it's not the fair game in the terms that if you don't buy, you are not competitive. So pretty much it, it leaves the players with the only one option. Either you pay or you lose. And I think this is quite dark in terms of if we think about the enjoyment of the game and also engagement of the users. Otherwise, it, it kind of happens. You are just purchasing your wins all the time. And now let's move on to the last one, which is the dark and invisible. And for that, we have two examples. One is a farm wheel, a game where people need to take care of what the tasks are. So they need to revisit the game, take care of what they have there, the tasks, they do the tasks. And because the game design is made to attract and to retain users coming and taking care of what they need to do there, it's very frequently. And therefore, it's a big question mark whether the people are evenly diligently taking care of their real lives as they are doing into this farm well. And that's not always the case, so not really contributing to the people's well-being. And the other example is Facebook algorithms. These are also not visible, but the algorithms are learning through the experiences of the users, through what users are choosing to do in the Facebook. They find what is relevant for the user, what is interesting for the user. And therefore, the content is created so that it would attract the same person coming back and finding more relevant information and staying more. And therefore, it's also a big question mark whether that's the only place that people need to come every day and spend long hours. So these were the examples for the four quadrants. And this is the opening of our conversation about how the technology design and game design can get dark. And we would like to invite everyone to try these tools whenever you are designing a persuasive technology or you are building up the game. Be honest, take this tool, look at it and see whether there is a balance between the well-being that you're bringing to your development company or the well-being for the users that you are providing through this gameful experience or technology interaction. We also have proposed a framework a framework for evaluation of the darkness of persuasive technology. So basically it tells, once you have the idea of building a technology with a specific purpose or the game, then you are building it up and then you are including these influential design principles that would be influencing how people relate with your game or relate with your technology. And therefore, after that, you need to go to our visibility and darkness matrix and double check whether there is a good balance and whether the value or the well-being is 
kept for the users to the degree that would be satisfying them. And then you kind of close it back to come back to your designs. So the framework for evaluating the darkness of persuasive technology is very handy for the practitioners and also for the scientists. So for the scientists to apply it to the other existing games and other existing persuasive technology to evaluate what's really happening, what are the intents of the designers and developers, and whether there is a good balance between the owner or the developer and the user and also for practitioners practitioners can always use it to make sure that whenever they go with their product with their game to the market how well the users will be experiencing their product so everyone welcome to download the paper to read it and apply the knowledge to your practice or your science and let's enjoy a better world for everyone take care